I, I want to talk about real briefly. I had a chance to speak with. Well, let me let me give a little let me give a little backdrop because we vibing. Um, I remember when I went to uh, USP Atlanta. And one of the homeboys, he was kind of showing me around. You know, I'm fresh on the compound. You know, me and my brother trying to, you know, starting a 35-year prison sentence. And so I had 35 years, and, like, my 35 years was everything to me. Like, it was the worst thing that could have happened to any individual on the planet, so I thought. So when I got to Atlanta, one of my homeboys, Mike D., he was showing me around the different places where I was trying to, you know, trying to trying to get a job. And so he was showing me, he he uh was telling me, he said, he said, man, look a dude over there. He said, man, dude, he got six life sentences. And so when he when he pointed over there, my my um my eyes went to where he was pointing at, right? And so as I as my eyes went to his, where his finger was, was pointing at, the guy was looking in my direction. So Mike D was like, yeah, man, dude got six life sentences. And so, you know, I kind of turned away from the dude, kind of, you know, kind of took my focus off his eye gauge. Cause I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm from the streets, you know, in the streets I handle my business. So, but now, I'm in a different environment. I don't know what's going on. So I don't know what people that have life sentences think about. I don't know what be on their mind. I don't know if they ever think they're going to get out. I don't know if they don't mind killing somebody. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm fresh in. So I told the homeboy, I said, man, look here, man. Don't, don't do that no more, man. You know, man, because I, I kind of felt like, felt like you put me on front street, man, because... I don't, I don't know what could be on this dude's mind. You know, he might be looking at me like he want to do something to me. I don't know. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I think about that. You know, I often think about those times back then when it was really dark. And when we go through things in life, you know, oftentimes we think about our situations being the very worst. Um, and that's until you have the opportunity to um, listen to um, somebody else's dark times. And so when he uh, told me the guy had six life sentences, I was like, well, I only got 35. So, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm crying about, you know. And so I, I had, the, um, I remember when I got out, <clears throat> And I was able to walk around as a free man, you know. I I um I shed tears uh, about the brothers that I had left behind in those prisons in those penitentiaries that um, may not ever get a opportunity to be free. And I, you know, and that 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 really bothered me. So even though I was free, and I was happy about being free. You know, I thought about my comrades that I that I had left behind. And so I had got a, a phone call the other day, and I had spoke with the brother a couple of times, but the brother that had the um the six life sentences, um, he finally got out. And I was able to talk to him. And I and I asked him, you know, I had the chance to to ask him some things that I've been wanting to ask him when we was in there, but I, you know, I didn't know how he may feel about it. So I never asked him. So I had a chance to ask him. I say, um, I say, bro, um, how did you feel with all having all those life sentences? And he say, man, um, every day, was like my first day. You know, every every day. Love rising. 
every day was, was like he was just starting a brand new sentence. And I'm like, wow. You know, that, 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 that's really darkness. And so when you, when, when I think about um, us out here, um, that's in the so-called free world, we have opportunities to do things that some people that's physically locked down can't do. But when you think about it, all of us are in some type of prison. Whether that prison be um, a relationship that you feel like you can't get out of. Whether that prison be um, a medical issue um, that binds you to a bed or binds you to a certain place. Whether, whether we are in prison to a mindset that goes contrary to us being great because of what we were taught in our environment. So when you think about it, all of us are locked in some type of prison. It might not be a physical prison and the worst prison that we could be in is a mental prison. You know, a prison that says, you know, you a nigga. You know, um, don't expect nothing good to happen to you in life. You know, you a, you a drug dealer woman or you a drug dealer. Or growing up in a household or an environment where people telling you you a B and an H and, and you look like your daddy and you ain't going to be this and you ain't going to be that. You know, a lot of those, a lot of those things, they're, 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 they're prisons. And the most difficult prison to, to get released from is the mental prison. And while some of us are victims of places that people put us in, you know, um, I talked a couple of nights about how some of us were raised. And, and 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 most of us was raised in those, you know, those Liberty City, Overtown, Open Locker, Carroll City, Brown Sub, um, Lake Lucerne, um, Lil Haiti. And um, you know, we were raised by some some parents that <clears throat> were trying to survive themselves. <clears throat> And so, so a lot of us have, have been through some things, you know, that, that, that really that impedes us from being the, 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 our greatest self. And so my, my greatest desire is to, is to, is to um, find the keys to unlock myself out of a plethora of prisons um, that I've been in for most of my life. And so I, you know, I, so I look at, I look at life, you know, as a, as a big place of confinement and, and coming out of a physical prison where everything is real every day. So my, my, my brother Robert Smith and, and those of us that, that have been in a confined area, you know, um, in an area probably in Liberty City that's unlike any other area. And every day we have to, we have to figure out how to survive, you know, how to be out of the way, you know, how to maneuver around cutthroats and thieves and, 
and, and all manners of people. And, it, and it's just like it's just like that in these streets out here. And so, I, you know, I, I think about the life that we live and, I, and oftentimes I think about politics and different things that's going on. And I know that my perspective is probably different from people's perspective that have not been in a physical uh, prison for um, a protracted amount of time. But man, I, I you know, this world reminds me of, of always wanting to keep us worried about things. Always want to keep us afraid. You know, you know, people, you know, we were taught, we were taught a long time ago that we were living in our last days. And I remember, you know, when we used to go to, when I used to go to elementary and um, junior high school, and they used to tell us that the last day of school was the end of the world and something terrible was going to happen. And then come to think of it, then you once you go through that last day of school, then you go through the summer, then the school again. You know, so like like for me, like I'm 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 done with all that, you know, all that fear and um who gonna attack us and and Osama bin Laden this and you know, and you look at the news and, and every day is you know, it, it, it's nothing, you know, some people don't even look at the news because every day the news is steady pouring into you that and me, why we should be afraid of this and why we should be afraid of that and this coming and now we got COVID and now we got COVID-2 and, you know, uh, doomsday three and all that stuff there, you know. So, you know, I, I, I've decided in, in, in my life, man, I'm 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 going to just fear God. And and I'm I'm gonna believe how I'm supposed to believe. I'm gonna believe that that nothing happens and nothing will happen to me in my life if it's not God's will. And when something happens in life, I'm gonna say, well, man, this must be God's will, and this must be something that I must work through, and this must be something that I must get through. So like, so for me, like, I'm done with the, all the worrying and. Am I going to pay my bills? Am I going to have a job? You know, is the world going to end? You know, um, I remember um, my daughters, one of my daughters, I think two of them probably told me, they say, Daddy, every time I go to church, they scare me. They always talking about the last day. Why the last day have to be the day when I'm supposed to thrive, when I'm supposed to live my life? And she say that that really scares me. You know, and I, I say, I say, darling, I, I've been hearing about the last days and, and the world going in and you got to get it right. And, you know, my mom been hearing that same thing and my grandparents have been hearing the same things. And, you know, so and then I've come to the conclusion that, that this world like, it always want to have us worry about something that don't have nothing to do with us. You know, I mean, certain things that goes on in government and certain things that go on in the world and certain wars that take place. Hey, it, it has always been and always felt like we was oppressed, suppressed and depressed in the neighborhood that we grew up in. But guess what? We thrived in it. We made it through it, you know, and, and just like, you know, when I started off with my 35 year sentence in college, you know, I, I never thought I was going to make it through. And so I, I often think about the brother that I talked about the other day that had the six life sentences. I like, and man, bro, did you ever think that you were going to ever get out of prison? Because you had six life sentences. That mean like you could live a whole life. You could die and come back. You could live and come back. You could die and come back. And then once you do that six times, then you serve the life sentence or six life sentences. 